Hey guys, it's Jane. I'm back. It's been a little while. Um, I'm not going to be able to post again probably until the end of the month, but I've just stolen a moment today and I'm hoping I can get through this before the kids get back. Before I begin, I have to explain something. I started the year with a reading challenge list. It's by Tim Challies. I'll link to it below. He's a Christian blogger. A number of people I know in real life um, have taken on this reading challenge this year and I thought seeing as how books are my sort of thing, I would give it a go. So that has determined a few of my choices um, at the beginning of the year. Um, I got to about book five and I'm still working on that book while I'm reading other things so things have kind of freed up a bit in my challenge in my list but um, some of these books are chosen because of the challenge so the first book the first thing on the reading challenge list was a biography and um, I went to my list of books that have been recommended me over the years and I've been meaning to get around to and I never have and I found Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast, which is, I thought, I was told, a memoir of his time as a young writer before he was really published in Paris, and him hanging out with other authors and just, you know, living in Paris, being bohemian. Um, if you believe him in the, what he writes about this, it's actually fiction, and I don't know how much you've... Does that mean he's like giving himself an out for not necessarily telling the truth about things? I don't know. But what I can say is that I did not enjoy this book. Um, or more accurately, I really, really did not like the protagonist of this book, i.e. Ernest Hemingway. And it certainly has not made me want to read any more by Hemingway. Um, I actually let myself go in my Goodreads review and, and um, really had a bit of a rant. So if you're interested in reading why I did not like this book, I'll link to that below and you can go and have your feel of hearing what it sounds like when Jane really lets fly. The second book um, that I read this year was also from the challenge list. Uh, it was supposed to be a classic and um, the classic that I chose as a science fiction reader was um, a science fiction classic because there's lots of science fiction classics that I've never read and I thought this was a good opportunity. So I went and I picked up Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, which I'm sure everybody has read but I had never read. Happily, this was a much um, more rewarding experiment than the first book. Um, if you have not read this before, it's a science fiction story set in a putative future time when books are illegal and firemen don't put out house fires but burn books. That's what I knew about the book going in and that's not inaccurate. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It's quite short. I'm not going to say much because in order to say anything really interesting, I think I would have to read it again because even though it was short, um, there were lots of ideas in it. I, there were a few questions that I have. I don't know that I was 100% sold by everything that went on in the story, but it certainly was a rewarding read. And if you haven't read it, um, this is an older science fiction work that really stands up. So I would encourage you to give it a try. The third book um, on the Ring Challenge list was a book about history and I picked up The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Uh, this has been on all the bestseller lists um, the past six months. I've seen it in all the bookstores and I had vaguely heard that it had a science fiction-y twist um, plus I was just sort of interested in it so I picked this one up. Um, I can, for those of you who have not read it, I can put the kibosh on the science fiction-y thing. There is, there is no science fiction in here. There's, there, are, there are elements that are counterfactual, i.e. that the the railroad in question is is not as it was in history, just a network of people who helped um, escaping slaves, um, but an actual kind of train tracks and tunnels and stuff. But that's really a counterfactual rather than a science fiction. It didn't feel like science fiction at any point. Having said that, it was a really engrossing story and especially the characters, the characters in it, the main character in particular, really well drawn and um, 
it, I understand why so many people have been raving about this book. Um, if you have the stomach to read another slave history, um, I don't know how many slave histories you've read, but if you have the stomach to read another slave history, this is a really good one. And um, although the story is heartbreaking, our heroine is kind of victorious at the end. I like something with the non-tragic ending, so that's good. The fourth um, book on the reading challenge list was a book that was targeted at your gender and here is where I start having issues with the categories on the on the reading challenge list when I did searches for books for women there's like lots of de Christian devotional guides that are written specifically for women but most of them I don't know I don't I don't understand why I mean there are certain I know that women's experiences are different from men's in lots of respects but some of the the ways that it is going about in the christian world i just i can't i can't stomach it and so i ended up looking at feminist books and thinking maybe i can find something here that will fit this that will be a rewarding read what i came up with was a book by a british comic called a book for her i figured with a title like that you know it had to fit in the category the author is somebody who i had never heard of before um, she was a working stand-up comic for some years um, doing all sorts of different material and then became kind of an overnight sensation when she did a show that was based on feminist themes, which is not something she'd really done before. And um, the, the book is really a memoir about her life as a comic and especially focused on her experience around this show about feminism and how different people responded to that. It was okay. Parts of it were funny, other things I didn't really connect to, but it wasn't terrible. There are two more books that I finished this month. Neither of them are connected to the reading challenge. They were just books that I picked up because I wanted to read them. The first one is one that so many people put on their best reads for last year, which I never got around to last year, which is Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I think I've remembered the author's name correctly. This is a corker. I'm not going to tell you much. It's a space opera, military SF story set in this amazingly complex and intricate and interesting world um, where the, the main character is a mid-level um, soldier who ends up getting a, a centuries-old dead general inserted into her brain to help her fight this thing and but then more happens it is just such a good read and um if you have any interest in military sf or space opera at all and you haven't read this run don't walk that was that's the easily the best book that i have read this month um and then i just finished this morning um emma newman's after Atlas, which is a second, uh, it's sort of a, a loose sequel to Planet Fall, which was um, um, a big book a year or so ago. Um, it only came out in November, I think, last year, so it's it's new, new. Um, after Atlas, I enjoyed a lot. It is almost like my perfect book. Um, it's it's this really, really good marriage between uh, a near future science fiction story and a police procedural. Um, the central character is a um, homicide detective in um, the British CID, essentially, only it's all different in this particular new, near future world. The connection with Planet Four, which is about a group of people who have left Earth going on this um, mission to the stars um, is that this um, detective, as a baby, was left behind by his mother, who was one of the people who went on the mission. That's not the only connection, but that's the initial connection with the book. It does come full circle. And at the end, um, the last few chapters of the book, um, we we're back much more in the world that connects with the Plantful story. For the first two thirds of the book, you don't really need to have read um, book one. Um, I think 
the ending will make you want to read book one if you haven't read book one already but that was also a stonking good read which I just finished this morning. So the only other book that I have been reading this month which I haven't finished yet The Promise of the Father by Marion May Thompson. The fifth book on Tim Challey's uh, reading challenge list was a book of theology this is a theology book that I've had on my shelf for a number of years and I've been meaning to read but I've never got around to. Um, as you know, paper books always take me a lot longer to read, plus it's non-fiction, plus it's like deep, so you actually have to sit aside and read it while you have brain capacity and there's not so much of that going on for me right now, so it's been slow going. Um, but I am really enjoying it. What this is, is uh, an investigation and a discussion of the idea ideas around the use of masculine language for God in the light of feminist critiques of that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting question because, I mean, the Bible uses ranges of language for God. However, there definitely is a strong skew towards masculine language for God. However, Christian theology, Orthodox Christian theology, has always maintained that God is not male, neither male nor female, in fact, without sex. And so the question arises, if that is the case, why do we have this propensity for using masculine language? What does that mean, if anything? And, and um if it's the case, can we can we usefully get away from that? Um, and if you abandon that, is there something significant apart from the masculine stuff that you're losing? So there's lots of um, interesting interconnected questions and other people may not be interested in this, but I am. But it is using a whole different part of my brain and, um, yeah, that part is only online sometimes <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I've been reading um as I said I'll be back again at the end of the month I probably won't be back before then I hope you're all well I'd love to hear what you're reading and I'll talk to you later bye